Hello everyone. My name is Tirup Parmar. I am a professor. This is something brief about me, as you can see. Now, in this particular lecture, I will be discussing about ransomware. That is one of the most dangerous thing. Anyone, any any technical or non-technical person, whosoever knows something about computers, they basically scared of something that is called as ransomware. Now. This particular topic in detail I am going to discuss here. I will also show you how we can tackle such situations. And if you have any doubt or query, feel free to ping me on this particular email address. So let's start discussing about ransomware. First we will discuss what we mean by a ransomware. As you can see I have listed out few points here. But a ransomware which is also known as rugware or scareware. Basically what this particular software or this particular a small program what it does is it restricts access to your computer system and demands that a ransom is paid. That is some money should be paid in return if you want to unlock your system or if you want to unlock your files that's what it does. So let's discuss it from this particular example. So as you can see how ransomware works basically it starts with an unsolicited email so it basically tricks you, tricks you down to click on any particular email or it basically gives you some of the links you just need to click on those links and as soon as you click on those URLs some some macros or basically some executable files gets executed or gets affected on your system so as you can see and uh, ransomware starts with an unsolicited email typically designed to trick the victim into clicking on attach or visiting web page. So you, uh, they just force you or they just trick you to click on any particular URL. Now the ransomware leverages flows in a computer operating system to force it to run ransomware code. So as soon as you click on those particular URLs in background there are some programs which starts executing itself without the permission of operating system or they basically find some loopholes or some backdoors which is present in your operating system. Now once this code starts executing they basically what what this basically ransomware does is they basically encrypts most important files present on your system and now what do we mean by encryption? Encryption means they basically lock your files or they basically convert your readable files into non-readable formats. So once this particular files are now converted or encrypted, if you want to read or get the access of this file, you need a key. A key to decrypt those files or to make it again in a normal format, then only you will be able to access it. And if you want that key or if you want to decrypt your files, you need to pay some money or a ransom to this hackers. That's what we mean by this particular attack. So as you can see important files on system and demands a ransom payment using digital currency that is Bitcoin. As we know Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. It does not basically handle by any particular bank. So if I make any transaction using a Bitcoin one cannot Trace our transaction because it is not handled by any single server which belongs to any XYZ bank. So any particular person who basically uses this particular cryptocurrency or also called as bitcoins for a transaction or for as a payment method one cannot easily trace where money is going. So WannaCry is a ransomware uses a windows flow to replicate itself and spread around a computer network. So it works exactly same like our worms work they also affects or they also attacks on a computer network the same way this is also doing itself or <clears throat> sorry Trojan horse also makes or replicates itself and it basically spreads or attached with each and every file which is present on your system the same thing is done with this particular WannaCry ransomware as well. Now these are few tools. Now before, uh, before discussing these tools let me just tell you some of the basic points which we also need to discuss about this ransomware. So let's discuss where this ransomware comes from. It is created by a scammer 
who are highly knowledgeable in computer programming it can enter your pc through an email attached or through your browser if you happen to visit a web page or a website that is infected with this type of malware it can also access your pc via your network now how to recognize it's obvious when your device has been infected with ransomware since you most likely won't be able to access your computer so that's what we can easily trace down that some attack or some ransomware is affected on our system now how to remove this ransomware make use of antivirus softwares they basically they are the one they are the most most likely person or they are the most likely one who can help you out with this particular situation so there are many antivirus software ransomware removal tools which should scan for and wipe out any ransomware attack found on your computer so i have listed down free a uh, few of the free ransomware removal tools which is available as you can see these are the few tools which can help you out with or with using this particular tools you can tackle down the situation so i hope one can easily easily tackle the situation now the most important part don't don't pay any ransom to this particular attacker remember you can use such situation you can take the help of any technical person to tackle down this situation so here are these are the all things which you should do now as you can see one guy <clears throat> how to prevent ransom attack make sure all software on your computer is up to date including your operating system browser and any toolbar plugin which we are using on our browser ensure that your antivirus software and firewall protection is also up to date now how to protect yourself with nt ransomware there is no better way to recognize remove and prevent ransomware then to use an antivirus and anti ransomware remember now wanna cry has infected as you can see has infected telephonic and nhs hospitals in spreading aggressively with over 50000 attacks so far so as you can see the main attack or main cities which is basically targeted by this particular attacker is russian then there are few other cities like massive perk in wonakrai ransom attacks with more than 50 57000 detection ransomware is mainly being targeted to russia ukraine taiwan but the ransomware has successfully infected major institutions like hospital across england and spanish telecommunication company that is telefonica now few things as you can see we saw the first version of wonakrai the same thing which i discussed the first version of wonakrai in february and now the ransomware is available in 28 different languages from languages like bulgarian to vietnamese again notice an increase in activity of this strain which quickly escalated into a massive spreading beginning at 10 am on friday the ransomware changes the affected file extension now remember it basically changes the file extension into dot v and cry so an infected file will look something like this if our original file named like this that is original name of file xyz.jpg and after that you will find this type of an extension to each and every file now this files needs an encrypted file also marked by wanna cry string at the beginning of the file so as you can see the ransomware drops the following ransom notes in a text file as well here is that particular file so you will find this type of a notepad where there are, there are there are some question what's wrong with your file what is happening and few other detail furthermore the ransomware being demanded as you can see it basically demands 300 dollar worth of bitcoin so as i said <clears throat> what we mean by bitcoin it is a cryptocurrency one cannot find out or one cannot trace the transaction where we are sending or receiving money so that's what it works like you'll find this type of a window if you are affected with this particular type of an attack here is address given and how to buy a bitcoin they have also provided a link how to buy bitcoin and few other details like if you want pay money in this particular time period which is left out here then 
their ransom will be doubled and after seven days they are going to delete all your files now in addition the victim's wallpaper is also changed to following image as you can see here on your wallpaper it will display such type of an image now next part is this attack once again prove that ransomware is powerful weapon that can be used against any consumer business alike ransomware becomes particularly nasty when it infects institution now it is the most dangerous part when it can affect or infect the institutions like hospitals where it can put people's life in danger now Infection vector WannaCry is most likely spreading on so many computers by using an exploit the equation group. Remember, they are using one exploit the equation group, which is a group that is widely suspected of being tied to the NSA, National Security Agencies of US, used for its dirty business. And again, a hacker group called shadow broker has stolen equation groups hacking tool and has publicly released them as firmed by security research, uh, researcher Kevin the exploit known as eternal blue or it is also known known as ms17010 was probably used by the cyber criminal behind WannaCry and <clears throat> one more thing how it affects the windows system using this particular vulnerability that is its exploits or it's probably used by cyber criminal behind WannaCry and windows server message block a network file sharing protocol that is one of the main uh, we can say a loophole or a drawback or one of the backdoor which they have used to enter or basically to affect most of windows based operating system computers now cyber criminal behind WannaCry is uh, sorry windows usually fully updated with their system with the latest available patches indian origin now remember indian origin techie links ransomware attack in north korea this is something in a news right now and as you can see this this researcher from a google that is neil mehta an Indian origin security researcher at Google has found evidence that North Korean hacker may be responsible for cyber attack that affected 150 countries. Now, Neil Mehta coded has been termed as most significant clue to date by Russian security firms as well. Now, researchers have said that some of the code used in Friday's ransomware known as WannaCry software was nearly identical, was nearly identical to used by Lazarus Group, a North Korean based hacker who used a similar version of devastating hack for Sony Pictures Entertainment in the year 2014 and last year hack of Bangladesh Central Bank as well. Now security experts are also cautiously linking the Lazarus groups to this latest attack after the discovery by Mehta. Meta has found similarity between code found within WannaCry and other tools believed to have created by Lazarus Group in past BBC report as well. So as you can see, Neil Mehta, a researcher at Google, also tweeted this particular part. So where he's showing that there are many, many similarities between attack which was happened on Bangladesh Central Bank, which was also happened on many other parts as well. By whom? By north korean based hackers <clears throat> now one more thing the security experts professor alan wooden said that timestamp within the original WannaCry code was set up to utc plus nine that is china's time zone and text demanding the ransom uses what reads like machine translated english but a chinese segment uh, apparently written by a native speaker Neil Mehta discovered is the most significant clue to date regarding origin of WannaCry. It is important that other researchers around the world investigate these similarities and attempt to discover more fact about the origin of WannaCry. North Korea has never admitted any involvement in Sony Pictures hack and while security researchers 
and US government have confidence in the theory. Neither can rule out the possibility of false flag. Now, <coughs> sorry, one more thing which I which I would like to highlight here that skilled hacker may have simply made it look like it had origin in North Korea by using similar techniques. So just to mislead, they basically used same techniques or same code which North Korea attempted on Sony Pictures as well as Bangladesh Central Bank. Now, no, uh, in case of WannaCry, it is possible that attackers simply copied code from earlier attack by Lazarus Group. And it's a strongest theory yet to origin of WannaCry, but there are also details that arguable point away from it being the work of North Korea. Now, two important things before we discuss about this, as you can see, where are the attacks happen on which countries? So, first China was among the country worst hitted. Remember, China was also hitted and not accidentally. The hacker made sure there was a version of ransom note written in Chinese. It seems unlikely North Korea would want to antagonistly its strongest ally, Russia, to was badly affected. And second is North Korean cyber attack have typically been far more targeted, often with a political goal in mind. In case of Sony Pictures, hackers sought to prevent the release of the interview, a film that mocked North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. And next thing, one cry in contrast was widely indiscriminate. It would infect anything and everything it could. And finally, it if the plan was simply to make money, it's been pretty unsuccessful on that front too. Only around 60,000 US dollar has been paid in ransom according to analysis of Bitcoin account being used by the criminals. With more than 2 lakh machines in infected, it's a terrible return. Remember, it's a terrible return if we say this particular thing. The global reach in unprecedented, the latest count is over 2 lakh victims in at least 150 countries and those victims, many of those will be businesses including large corporations. The most disruptive attack were reported in UK where hospital and clinics were forced to turn away patients after losing access to computers. These are the countries which are badly affected as you can see in many many of the ransomware attacks. Now in case of WannaCry, it's possibly that hackers simply copied code from earlier attack by Lazarus Group. The WannaCry, uh, WannaCry ransom hacker made some real immature mistakes. Now, what are those mistakes? We'll just discuss this. WannaCry attack has quickly become the worst digital disaster to strike the internet in years. Now, one more thing. Crippling transportation and hospital globally. They have crippled transportation and hospitals, but it increasingly appears that this is not the work of hackers mastermind. Instead, cybersecurity investigators see in the recent meltdown a sloppy cyber criminal scheme, one that reveals immature mistakes at practically every turn as the unprecedented ransomware attacks known as WannaCry unfolds the cybersecurity community has marveled an inexplicable error the malware's author have made. Despite the giant footprint of attack which leveraged a leaked NSA created Windows hacking tricks to infect more than 2 lakh system across 150 countries, malware analysts say poor choice on the part of WannaCry's creator have limited both its scope and profit. Those errors include building in web-based kill switch remember one of the most important part kill switch using this particular trick or kill switch only many many government based uh, intelligent agency were able to halt this particular attack that is ransomware now what we mean by this kill switch as he worked to reverse engineering samples of WannaCry Malware Tech, remember Malware Tech, this is the company who basically identified the skill switch, discovered that ransomware's programmer has had built it to check whether a certain URL lead to live web page. Curious why the ransomware would look for that domain. Malware Tech registered it himself. Remember, they have registered 
one URL which was directing all the victims to that particular domain. Now malware tag registered this particular domain on themselves as it turns out that just by spending $10 investment was enough to shut down the whole thing. It turned out that as long as the domain was unregistered and inactive, the query had no effect on ransomware spread. But once the ransomware checked the URL and found it active, they have shut down the system. Now competing theories exist as to why WannaCry's perpetrator built it this way. One possibility might be that the functionality was put in place as an intentional kill switch. In case the creator even wanted to ruin the monster they have created. Now they have created this kill switch only if in situation if the situation goes out of end just to stop that spread they have created this kill switch but apparently malware tech find out about this particular kill switch based on behavior implemented in the code the kill switch was most likely intentional hackers could have included the feature to shield the Ransomware from analysis that sort of examination often take place in controlled environment and that is what we call as sandbox Researchers construct some of this environment to trick malware into thinking it's querying outside server Even though it's really talking to a bunch of dummy sandbox IP addresses as a result any address the malware tries to reach gets a response even if the actual domain is unregistered since the domain malware tech required as supposed to be dormant but went live. WannaCry may have assumed it was in the middle of forensic analysis and they've shut it down. Building anti-analysis defense into malware is common but WannaCry hackers appear to have botched the implementation by relying on a static discoverable address whoever find it. In this case malware tech could just register the domain and trigger WannaCry shutdown defense. Now, what we mean by this temporary fix or which is called as sinkhole. Now, the kill switch doesn't help device, devices WannaCry has already infected and locked down. So, this temporary fix is to stop further attacks but not to reverse attack which has already happened. So, already infected and locked down but by registering the domain and then directing the traffic to it into a server environment meet to capture and hold malicious traffic known as sinkhole remember they have diverted a traffic that is called a sinkhole they they are sinking the whole attack the discovery doesn't amount to a permanent fix this is not a permanent fix this is just a temporary fix so it might possible in future they might come up with a newer version of the same so all it would take to get around it would be a new strain of WannaCry whose code excluded the kill switch or relies on a more sophisticated URL generated instead of a static address and more fundamental problem of vulnerable devices particularly Windows XP devices they are remains the most vulnerable remember Windows XP devices remains till now they are the most vulnerable devices or operating systems now when we talk about something else here as those errors included building in web based kill switch that cut short its spread unsavvy handling of bitcoin payments now remember they are demanding ransom in form of bitcoins but they are not also in a form of much savvy manner or in a much practical or a mature manner the way they are demanding bitcoin they are also very very immature thing so <clears throat> unsavvy handling of bitcoin payment that makes it far easier to track the hackers group profit and even a shoddy ransom function in the malware itself they there are some function which is already present in this malware so one can easily uh, check out what are the ways they are basically they are basically going to find out how one can uh, how one can uh, basically uh, making payments to them and how they are going to decrypt their files so that's what we are going to discuss here an attack of this magnitude involves so many mistakes raising plenty of 
questions if actual crim uh, cyber criminal professional improved on the groups of methods the result could be even graver so this are not a professional one as per the research till now if they are a professional one then this this particular attack might be might be more gravest or more dangerous so as you can see they have just earned this much money only by infecting millions and millions of computers and that is also at professional level industry level so as you can see mistakes which are made at last count the group behind wannacry has earned just $55,000 from its internet shaking attack a small function of multi-million dollar profit of more professional still the ransomware scheme from a ransom, a ransom perspective it's a catastrophic failure it's a failure on that their side whether they have not they have not made it in a proper manner or there are some mistakes or failures from their side so as you can see there is one researcher as you can see there is a researcher which is with the name Matthew Hackey a researcher at London based college now what they are saying and why and how they basically uh, reach to some conclusions so high damage is very high publicity very high enforcement visibility and it has probably the lowest profit margin ever seen from any moderate or even small ransom campaign now as you can see the Matthew Hackey from a research department of London based security firm he's saying that WannaCry's code and found that malware doesn't automatically verify that a particular victim has paid the demand of 300 Bitcoin a $300 worth Bitcoin ransom by assigning them a unique Bitcoin address. They should have done this by assigning a unique Bitcoin address. They should find out whether a demanded money is being paid by that victim or not. Instead, it provides only one of four hard-coded Bitcoin address, meaning incoming payments doesn't have identifying detail that could help automate the decryption process. Instead, the criminal themselves have had to figure out which computer to decrypt as ransom comes in. An unintended arrangement gives the hundreds of thousands of in infected devices. It's, it's really... A manual process at the other end and someone has to acknowledge and send a key remember they are not doing on on some automatic basis as you can see here it sets it setup will inevitably lead to criminal failing to decrypt computers even after payment why because they will not be able to detect whether some some person or a victim who actually paid money to them or not because they have not provided some automatic method just against the payment decrypt their files no they are doing it manually and you can just imagine they have infected millions and millions of computer and in this situation manually decrypting each and every computer's data or each and helping each and every victim after paying ransom it's it's way too difficult already been monitored one victim who paid more than uh, who already paid money to them and after more than 12 hours ago and he's yet to receive decryption key through which he can decrypt his files they are not really prepared to deal with outbreak of this scale using only four hard-coded bitcoin addresses in the malware not only introduces the payments problem but also makes it far easier for the security community and law enforcement to track any attempt to any uh, <clears throat> any uh, any attempt to crash or to cash out one cry profit just to find out how many payments they are receiving it very easy for all the uh, law enforcement agencies and all all the intelligence agency as well all bitcoin transactions are visible on bitcoin's public accounting ledger known as blockchain remember there is a ledger like banks used to ma maintain their transaction the same way on on uh, over uh, over internet on a global way all the bitcoin holders they they can check out the transaction using a ledger or an entry like uh, like we use uh, 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 microsoft uh, Microsoft tools to make a ledger the same way there are also ledgers or a entry book which is present 
for bitcoins as well so from there one can easily find out how many money is being trans uh, transferred on any particular one uh, bitcoin uh, id that's what they are uh, that's what it means so it looks impressive as hell because you think they must be genuine coders in order to integrate the nsa exploit into a virus so they are not that that big developer or that big coder why because they only know how to how to find out or how to fetch the software which is developed by Na national security agency us based nsa but now they are not be capable enough to handle the same thing in a proper efficient manner and that basically leads to their profit loss they have hard coded bitcoin address rather than one bitcoin address per victim shows their limited thinking now cisco researchers they also found out that check payment button in a ransomware remember cisco researchers also find out this particular check payment button in ransomware doesn't actually even check if any bitcoin have been sent or not it randomly provides one of a four answers so it it not actually checking whether a, a ransom is paid by that victim or not no they have hard coded four answers now three fake error messages or or a fake decryption message that's it this is are the four messages which they are providing if the hacker are decrypting anyone's file it's through a manual process of communication with victim via a malware's contact button so they have also provided contact button there now one more thing by arbitrarily sending decryption key to a few user to give victims the illusion that paying the ransom does free their files and unlike more functional and automated ransom attack that junky process provides almost no incentive for anyone to actually pay up it breaks the entire trust model that makes ransomware work to be fair wanna cry has spread with a speed and scale that ransomware has never achieved before its use of recently leaked nsa windows vulnerability called eternal blue they have used something windows vulnerability called eternal blue remember this is one of the main main task or one of the main reason behind the success of this wanna cry ransomware now but even judging wanna cry solely by its ability to spread its creator made huge blunders they inexplicably built a kill switch that is the one of the biggest mistake from their side into their code designed to reach out to a unique web address and disable its encryption payload if it makes a successful connection the feature might be a stealth major designed to avoid detection if the code is running on a vital or uh, uh, sorry on a virtual test machine but it also allowed a pseudonym researchers who goes by the name malware tech to simply register that domain and that is what happened in this case as well malware tech just registered a domain which they were using and their attack is just stopped at one time only just with the spending of 10 dollars they just re registered one domain which is worth of 10 dollars and this this particular 10 dollar investment or registering a domain on their name just stopped catastrophic attack now remember one more point <clears throat> over the weekend a new version of wanna cry was also appeared now as you can see ransomware known as angular estimated 60 million a year before getting shut down in 2015 this is one example of another ransomware which was not so popular but they still they have earned this much money and you can just imagine the most popular ransomware in today's time was earning is so so less so you can just see how they fail on their side over the weekend a new version of wanna cry appeared with a different kill switch address now this different kill switch address was also detected by dubai based security research uh, researchers registered that second domain immediately on their name cutting short the spread of that adapt version of the malware too now dubai based security researchers can't imagine why the hacker haven't yet coded their malware to reach out to a randomly generated url rather than a static one built into a ransomware code 
don't see any obvious explanation for why there's still a kill switch why there there is a still a kill switch same mistake twice which is a one of the biggest mistake from their side now as you can see the same mistake twice especially one that effectively shuts wanna cry down makes little sense it seems like a logic bomb that's it nothing more than that so as you can see wanna cry we caused how much damage but the li little profit that some security researchers have be be uh, begin to suspect that it may not be a money making scheme at all instead they speculate it might be someone trying to embrace nsa national security agency of us by just by clicking or just by trying to hack their tools that's what it looks like and a more professional operations could improve on one one cry's technique to inflict far worse in damages as well so this is one of the most important drawback as you can see all of which has vastly limited one cry's profit even as a ransomware has shut down life saving equipment in hospital and paralyzed trains atms and subway systems as well earlier and much publicized ransomware campaign known as angular took in an estimated 60 million as i said it took like 60 million a year before getting shut it down and if we talk about one cry whose profit is so less then it might be a major drawback or it might be a failure from their side or it might be attack which is not from professional ones this is conclusion on which we can reach out after discussing so many things i hope this particular points are clear to you i have also provided those softwares or those or uh, anti ransomware tools which we can use to handle with our systems i hope everything is clear to each and every one of you if you have any doubt or query feel free to ping me on my email address which i have provided in starting of the lecture and at the same time you can also write it down in a comment section see you in the next lecture where i'll be discussing about more of such tools because as we know once we are infected with some such type of attack it might possible some other type of attack might possible so we should have clear understanding about what we mean by malware spyware adware what we mean by computer virus trojan horse root kit virus phishing key logger what we actually mean by hacker how they basically infect our system what we mean by social engineering what we mean by spams what is scam over internet browser hijacker what we mean by computer worm what do you mean by identity theft what is cyber crime what do you mean by cracking what is distributed dos botnet cyber bullying sniffer and many different things so stay tuned i'll be discussing all other detail in de uh, all other this things in detail in my next lecture thank you